Hello everyone, it's Jeremy from nashosted.com and today I'm going to be doing a application highlight and this application is PwnDrop and we're going to be installing it right here on our virtual DSM which I have set up here on my RS820+. Plus. I've got about 100 gigabytes allocated to it and we're running about one processor so we didn't throw a whole lot of power on this VM but it is here and I've got my baby Yoda here looking real nice here as the backdrop wallpaper so what this is is a self-deployable file hosting service for red teamers allowing you to easily upload and share payloads over http https and webdav which is really cool super simple to set up and install and we're going to be doing this right here using docker so if you don't have docker installed that's the first thing you're going to need to do and you can do that pretty simply by going to the package center searching docker and then it'll say install instead of open. Then you'll install it, let it run, and we're gonna head over to the registry and search for PwnDrop. And we're gonna download this first one, this first image here at the top. We'll pick the latest, and then we'll wait for the image to download. It's gonna be like 39, I believe 39 megabytes. Yep, and there it is, it's already done. We'll double click to launch it. And I'm gonna rename this to just PwnDrop. Get rid of the one. Click Advanced Settings, Enable Auto Restart. And what this does is like, say for example, if you lose power and your NAS has to restart, it'll also restart this container. So it'll restart when your NAS restarts. For the volume, the thing you need to understand with the volume is you can map this to any shared folder on your NAS. It doesn't have to be within the Docker folder like I'm about to do. You'll create a folder. I'm gonna do a subfolder in my Docker folder. So I'm gonna create Pwn Drop. This is more or less for quickly sharing files and not so much for indexing files. So keep that in mind when you use this. This is more for sharing rather than indexing. We're gonna go ahead and use the PwnDrop folder as an example. I will select that and I'll have this on the website at nashosted.com. So this is it right here, this is our mount path. And then we'll head over to, don't wanna forget that A for data. And I'm not gonna use port 80. You can use port 80 and you can map it to whatever you want, but I prefer to use the secure. So I'm just gonna delete this port and I'm going to just map the secure one to triple eight and I'll leave 53 alone. That's all we have to do. We just click apply. We don't have to add any environment variables or links or anything like that. Then you'll click next once again and then make sure run this container after the wizard is finished is ticked. You don't have to have that ticked, but You'll just have to remember to start the container after it's done installing. So we'll click apply and then we'll wait for that to go ahead and spin up and then we'll head over to the container tab and we can see that it is up and running and it's very quick to deploy and there's one funny thing I wanted to show you guys though that um, I think you'll get a kick out of and it's kind of a security thing so not just anyone. Say for example you want to forward the port that you attach to this application and somebody tried to get into the administration they wouldn't be able to because they would get this. So if you just go to the port number, yeah, you're gonna get rickrolled. So you have to go to the IP of your NAS, then the port slash pwn drop. Then it will bring you up to create a username and password. This is the admin account. Another password. And then you just create the account and then you log in with that account. NAS hosted. And you're in. So this tells you right here uh, how much free space you have and how much you've used. So this should match, 95.66 should match this, and it does on your NAS. So there it is. It's called Pwn Drop for a reason because you just drag and drop files into the, the web UI to upload files. So for example, if I wanted to upload this photo of the baby, I can do that. And there it is. And it is uploaded. So we'll see, we see the file here. We'll go here and we'll go to our mapped folder where we mapped it on our NAS. We'll go into the Pwn Drop in files and there it is. It's an encrypted file in there. So you won't be able to access the files within the file station and that's because it's a secure way to send files using the links that you create within the web UI. So you can copy the HTTP or the web dev. Uh, it actually allows you to stream MP3s. So we can upload a quick example here. There it is. We should be able to see it again if we refresh on our file station. There it is. And just some settings you can see here for the files. You can change the name of the file so we can call it podcast if we want. Um, I wouldn't really change the path or anything like that, but you can edit the file by uploading a different one, but we'll just change the name for now. So change it to podcast and see how that's just a really long name. We'll just edit that to we'll just call it 
file clip. There. Gets rid of that long string. It's still going to keep the file name, though, within the web UI. And uh, let's see. You can enable the facade and, and serve the, the facade file instead of the original one. You can actually disable downloads. So you can still keep it on the server, but not allow people to download it. You can turn that back on. And if you do delete the files from the web UI, it will delete them off of the server. Of course, that's what you want it to do, right? <laughs> Pondrop is actually a really cool solution for people who are looking to quickly share files within a network. Say you've got a group of developers who are working together and you want to send them a quick file. This is an easy way to do that. Obviously, you wouldn't use this to index files like music and movies and stuff like that. This is almost 100% used for sending and shipping files. Uh, real quick, I'm going to take a look at the settings. Real basic, uh, this is where that Rickroll video link was stored here. You can change that to go redirect, I should say, anywhere you want. Um, you can create like a, a website or something or a landing page, I should say. But I wouldn't mess with any of this stuff in here if you really don't understand you know, what this is and how it works. But this is the basic uh, UI of the settings, pretty basic. And that's kind of the way it should be with something simple as this. I wanted to show you about the MP3 is when you copy it, instead of it downloading, it will allow you to actually listen. Okay. So this is number one. See, allows you to listen to it. So that was an example of an MP3 image. We can toss one on here really quick and you can copy that again, go here. And there it is. It's a very basic. The web UI is clean. It looks good. I want to thank you, Bagretsky. But anyways, that's it. It's very simple, easy to set up. There it is. I do want to say, I don't know if I mentioned this, but yes, I am using a virtual DSM from my RS820 Plus. So the CPU usage and the RAM usage you see here could differ because I'm only allowing it so much on this this uh, virtual machine. Overall, I mean, look at this. It's, it's very low. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a thumbs up, follow the channel if you don't already, and uh, leave us a comment in the comment section below. I'm Jeremy, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.